There's no such thing as questions, just hidden answers. Stay tuned to PH Murder Stories as we revisit the inconceivable crimes that exist. Some listeners may find the following content of PH Murder Stories highly disturbing due to its graphic nature. PH Murder Stories does not condone nor promote violence of all sorts. Listener discretion is advised. Before we start with this episode, we would like to thank Mr. Ben Hernandez for sharing with us the story behind his father's gruesome killing in 1994. Kuya Ben messaged us on Instagram last February 2021 and told us about the revelations he recently learned about his father's death after reconnecting with his relatives from his father's side in 2019. For more than two decades, Kuya Ben did not know much of his father's killing. He only knew back then that his father was killed, but was vastly unaware of the reasons and the people behind his horrific slaying. Kuya Ben's father is Benedicto Felipe Santos Hernandez. He was a former film and TV producer in GMA7 and BBC2, most notably the show Lovingly Yours, Helen, starring Filipina actress and radio-slash-TV personality, Helen Vela. Helen Vela was also the former partner of Benedicto and the mother of Kuya Ben. According to Kuya Ben, his mother told him that her relationship with his father was great from 1973 till 1979. However, between 1980 and 1985, Helen and Benedicto's relationship started to have complications. Based on what Kuya Ben told us, the relationship between his parents became violent and unstable due to his father's compulsive drinking, gambling, and unfaithful acts in the course of the relationship. It is notable to mention that Kuya Ben's parents were already married in their previous relationships. Helen was married to Orly Punzalan from 1967 to 1973. They both had two children, Paolo Punzalan, a senior pastor at a well-known church, and Princess Punzalan, also an actress like her mother. She was well known for her role as the antagonist to the hit TV show Mula sa Puso that aired from 1997 to 1999. Meanwhile, Benedicto was also married before he met Helen. His first wife was Maria Luisa Hernandez. Together, they had three boys, Oben, Juni Boy, Voltaire, and two girls, Raquel and Malu. Kuya Ben's relationship with his siblings was not easy. According to Kuya Ben, he felt like he was rejected by his siblings due to the situation that he came from, particularly his father and mother's complicated situation. When he was young, he witnessed his parents fight several times, either shouting or physically harming each other. From the latter years of Helen and Benedicto's relationship, it is no secret that Kuya Ben's emotional development got affected during his childhood years. Amid the troubling relationship between Kuya Ben's parents, Helen had a fling on the side with actor Philip Gamboa, which fueled the conflict with Benedicto. The attraction came between Helen and Philip in 1984. Both starred in Heredero, a TV show in RPN9 that aired from 1984 to 1987. In the end, both Helen and Benedicto's relationship went badly. By mid-1985, Helen filed physical injuries charges against Benedicto through the help of her friend, La Arni Enriquez, also a celebrity and former partner of President Joseph Ejercito Estrada, who was then San Juan City Mayor. Then Mayor Erap and La Arni helped Kuya Ben's mom file a temporary restraining order against Benedicto and gained full custody of Kuya Ben who was nine years old at the time. Indeed, he was in the middle of a complex situation between his parents. The media scrutiny only added to Kuya Ben's suffering as they vilified the image of Benedicto as an alcoholic and abusive man. Though a few years later, both Helen and Benedicto 
would eventually be civil with one another. According to Kuya Ben, his father called his mother if he could see his son. They also became good friends as they were working together, finding potential TV and film projects for Helen's daughter as she debuted her acting career. Kuya Ben would eventually see his father in 1988, three years after he last saw him. At the time, Benedicto often moved homes, but the reason was not explained to Kuya Ben. His hunch was that maybe his father was in some sort of financial distress due to his TV production work becoming stagnant in the late 1980s. In the latter years of Benedicto's life, he had occasional flings and affairs with younger women till his saddening death in 1994. On the evening of March 10, 1994, a tragedy struck Benedicto when two men invaded his home and robbed him of his valuables. Unfortunately, the perpetrators weren't content with just stealing the victim's valuables. They ended up killing him. At the time of his death, Benedicto was at his home in Pililia, Rizal, with his live-in partner, Marivic Rodelas, and friend, Noel Espinosa. According to Marivic Rodelas, at about 8 in the evening, while she and Ben Hernandez, with their baby, were watching television in their bedroom, two men, both armed with bladed weapons, suddenly entered their unlocked bedroom. She was able to see suspects' faces and physical attributes because the lampshade and television set in their room was open. One of the suspects poked a knife at her neck, while the other suspect straddled on top of Benedicto, who was then lying in bed. Afterward, one of the suspects demanded from Benedicto the proceeds of the land he recently sold and jewelry. They took 2,000 pesos worth of cash and several pieces of luxury watches and jewelry worth 400,000 pesos, more or less. After taking the money and jewelry, both suspects tied Benedicto and Marivik's hands with an electric cord, and then they went out of the house, taking Benedicto with them. Meanwhile, Marivik identified the two suspects as Ernesto Sabion and Cesario Murphy. According to her, sometime in January 1994, Benedicto and a certain Marmerto, June Ranis, who later would become one of the persons of interest in the case, were accompanied by two workers who resembled Ernesto Sabion and Cesario Murphy. This detail was crucial because, on that same day, Benedicto had a heated argument with the three men regarding the price of having his Calamansi farm cleaned. After the suspects left with Ben, Marivic managed to untie herself and quickly went to their friend Noel Espinosa's room to inform him of what just happened. On the other hand, Noel was already aware that there were intruders inside his friend's house, which prompted him to lock his doors, close the lights, and hope that the suspects won't see him. Afterward, both Marivic and Noel started searching for Benedicto and proceeded to the room of Lolita Santos, their housemaid, but she was not around. Then they called the police, and ten policemen went with them to their house to help find Benedicto. Later, Benedicto's wounded body was found beside an old hut not far from their home. Benedicto was seen groaning, and his hands were still tied at his back. He had hack wounds on his head, face, neck, and stomach. They brought him to the Tanay General Hospital, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. According to Marovic, after returning to their house, she saw Lolita, who was shocked to know the incident, but at the same time looked pale and nervous. Based on Kuya Ben's written letter to us regarding the significant details behind his father's killing, his relatives, particularly his Aunt Luz, told him that Lolita was involved with the killing of her employer for 20 years. According to Luz, who was present with all the hearings that took place regarding Benedicto's case, Lolita had a relationship with one of the suspects, which explained why one of them was explicitly demanding for the proceeds of Benedicto's recently sold land. 
Aside from Maravik, Lolita also knew that Benedicto had a check worth 300,000 pesos with him at the time of his brutal killing, and thought that he already encashed the check a few hours before the crime happened. It implies that Lolita might have tipped off her lover, presenting them an opportunity to rob the victim. However, Benedicto changed his mind and decided to encash the check the following day, which Lolita and the other suspects did not anticipate. The police were able to catch the perpetrators the following day. According to Luz and her husband Francis, the uncle of Cuya Ben and the younger brother of Benedicto, both suspects were seemingly under the influence of illegal drugs. A follow-up investigation led to the arrests of Ernesto Sabion and Cesario Murphy, who admitted their participation in the crime during the investigation. Ernesto Sabion confessed that he killed Benedicto Hernandez. At the same time, he implicated Lolita Santos, who was also arrested and later on confessed her participation. Subsequently, all three were charged with a crime of robbery and homicide. Lolita was granted parole sometime in 2002, while one of the two male convicts committed suicide in 2006 and the other remains imprisoned. Indeed, what happened to Benedicto was a case of robbery gone wrong. As stated by Kuya Ben, the robbers even took his father's gold bracelet, which was promised to be given to him when he turns 18 years old. Unfortunately, Kuya Ben was only 17 years old when he lost his father. On August 12, 2017, Kuya Ben had an episode in MMK featuring his life story and how he deals with the everyday challenges of being part of a broken family. Even though it was Kuya Ben's story to tell, MMK's portrayal of his father's death was simplified to an off-screen dialogue. He was disappointed with how the media covered Benedicto's death. According to Kuya Ben, at the time of his father's death, it seemed that the media partially sensationalized the story. From news outlets to newspapers, Benedicto's name wasn't even included in the headlines. Instead, writers wrote in the title, quote, Helen Vela's ex-lover killed. Dating galibin ni Helen Vela pinatay, unquote, and other similar titles. Apparently, those who covered Benedicto's death opted to use Helen Vela's name for the sake of trending, even though both were already separated a few years back. When we asked about what Kuya Ben felt during those times, he said, quote, Ginamit ang pangalan ng nanay ko kasi raw mas mabenta at mas newsworthy. Yes, as far as I'm concerned, I did feel violated. Why would they banner out and drag my mother's name in order for their papers to sell? I believe that the writers were, at some point, insensitive to my emotional state and that of my Tito Francis and Tita Luz. They should have thought about the kind of emotional impact these would have on us. Unquote. Instead of sticking with the facts of the case, news outlets emphasized Benedicto as the former lover of Helen Vela that got killed, rather than Benedicto, a father and a well-respected media personality that was gruesomely killed out of greed and lust. Thank you, Kuya Ben Hernandez, for suggesting this case to us. We truly appreciate your confidence in our platform to cover your father's case. Stay tuned for our next episode as we go through the tragic death of a young boy that was held hostage at a bus station in Pasay City. For further updates, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at PH Murder Stories. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, PH Murder Stories. If you have case suggestions, please go to our website at phmurderstories.com and fill out the request form at File Your Blotter. Did you like this episode? Give us a rating on Apple Podcasts, or if you're listening in other platforms, kindly send us a review on our Facebook page or send us a tweet. You can also share our podcast to your Instagram and Facebook stories through Spotify. 
Your support would significantly benefit PH Murder Stories to produce more quality content. We're also inviting you to join our Facebook group, PH Murder Stories The Verdict, and participate in our bi weekly discourse about true crime, both local and international. This group is a safe space for true crime and mystery fans like us who want to engage in thorough discussions about the subject. See you there, suspects. The verdict is in your hands. See you there.